Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's yet another pitch meeting in the MCU verse. Which one, Dan? We're finally back to the good stuff with Avengers Endgame. Mm. I'm not surprised there's plot holes in this. Thanos mm. did wipe out half of the universe. There's stuff to explain, yes. Yes. Let's go see it. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. So, you have an Avengers Endgame script for me? Yes, sir, I do. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> very exciting. So, we're going to start off with Hawkeye with his family, but they all get dusted. Oh, my God. And then we go up into space and check in on Tony and Nebula. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do uh, <laughs> do you think you could stop saying, oh, my God? Sorry, I'm just so excited. That's okay. So, <laughs> wow. anyway, it seems like Tony is about to die because he's out of oxygen and food. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, sir. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. But then Captain Marvel shows up and saves him because she's working with the Avengers now. Oh, Captain Marvel. Marvel, huh? So we're gonna show her meeting them and stuff? No, I mean, we already had the post credit scene in Infinity War and the post credit scene in Captain Marvel, so I feel like people know how she got there. But what if people haven't seen those movies? Uh, I mean... I'm just kidding. This is the world's <laughs> most expensive TV show. It's not our fault if people haven't seen the last episode. Exactly. Uh, okay, yeah, good joke, sir. So then what happens? Well, they find out what planet Thanos is on, and he looks a lot more like Shrek than he used to. Oh, people like Shrek. <laughs> and so the Avengers show up, and they're like, where are the stones? And he's like, oh yeah, no, I destroyed those. Oh, that's not good. Nope, it's not. And so then Thor, you know, chops his head off. He does what now? Mm. He cuts Thanos' head off and it rolls off into the corner and he's dead. Well, well, I'm surprised this turned out to be a very short movie. We are going to save a ton of money, though. <laughs> oh, no, it's not done. <laughs> but, but Thanos is dead. Yeah, we're going to fade to black and the words five years later appear on the screen. What? <laughs> yeah, five years have passed, and everybody's super sad and depressed because all their friends are still dead. Listen, it's extremely important to me to quote Backstreet Boys as little as possible in my day-to-day -day life, but I'm going to need you to quit playing games with my heart. Why is that extremely <laughs> important to you? Just, okay, what happens next? Well, Captain Marvel's going to be like, I'm very busy now, and peace out. Pretty rude. And then a rat is going to set Ant-Man free from the quantum realm, which is going to be the key to saving everyone. Oh, life-saving rats are tight. <laughs> yeah, so it turns out Ant-Man was in the quantum realm for five years, but to him it felt like five hours. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so he goes to see the Avengers, and he's like, hey, time is weird, right? Maybe that's something we can look into. Okay. So they go see Tony, but he has a daughter now, and He's like, time travel's impossible, and this is dumb, and no thank you. Oh, Tony has a daughter. Yeah, she's real adorable. She tells him, I love you 3,000. Oh, does she think he's the lead singer of Outkast? No, it's just a cute <laughs> thing she says. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, so Tony's gonna end up changing his mind about helping them, so then he has to figure out time travel. But he says it's impossible. That's gonna be hard to do. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely, Barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. Of course. Oh, really? Yeah, he just tries something after doing the dishes, and it works immediately. <laughs> well, great. <laughs> so then the Avengers have to get the rest of the team together. Oh, very exciting. Yeah, so they go get Thor, but he's fat now. Oh, you just opened up a whole new world for cosplayers. Oh, yeah, no. I did, and Tony's gonna call him the Big Lebowski. That movie starring Jeff Bridges? That's the one. Jeff Bridges, who also starred in Iron Man? That's mm -hmm. the one. Oh, damn it. I mean, it's fine. Let's just try not to mention too many real-world movies. Okay, well, we'll keep it to a minimum. Just a couple of other references to, like, Back to Never the Future and Hot Tub Time Machine. Hot Tub Time Machine starring Sebastian Stan. Mm -hmm. Ah, dang it. It's bound to happen. We love pop culture references, but we have all the famous people in these things. Yeah. Yeah, we do. So anyway, they have Thor, and I guess they wait for Captain Marvel to come back. No, she's busy. Yeah, but can't they, like, wait for her to make contact? Seems like she'd be good to have around. She's extremely busy. She has no time for this. I mean, okay. So anyway, the plan is to go into <laughs> the past emergency. and get Infinity Stones. Oh, time heist. But the thing is, they have a very limited number of Pym particles, so they have one shot to get this right. Why don't they go back in time and steal some more particles? I mean, yeah, eventually they do. Why don't they do that, you know, right away? Because then the stakes wouldn't be so high, and also they just want to get started right away. Oh. Oh, okay. So anyway, then they break off into teams and explore a bunch of old Marvel movies. Oh, it's like fan service the movie. Exactly. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Like Rocket and Thor are gonna go to Asgard. Very exciting. Which actually reminds me, we are gonna have to get Natalie Portman back. Oh, what do you need her for? I need her to take a nap. I mean, it's gonna be the world's most expensive nap, no, but yeah, okay. Great. So yeah, they have to steal the reality stone from inside her by poking her with a pokey thing. Okay. And some other Avengers are gonna go to the Battle of New York. Right, there should be three stones in New York at that time. Exactly. But then Loki he's gonna manage to grab the Tesseract and disappear. Oh, where does he go? Into a spin-off TV show. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Also, Black Widow and Hawkeye go to Vormir, so they have to do that whole sacrifice that which you love thing for the Soul Stone. Oh. Yeah, and so Black Widow dies. Well, well, thank God the team happened to send two Avengers that love each other. It is a pretty convenient <laughs> coincidence. So what else happens? Well, Iron Man is gonna build a gauntlet, and Hulk is gonna snap his fingers and bring everyone back. Oh, wow, 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 wow. But it turns out that Thanos knows about the plan because past Nebula's face projector is connected to the same 
same Wi-Fi network as present Nebula. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, so they just bombed the hell out of the Avengers facility. I mean, this thing turns into a crater. Oh, boy, is everyone okay? Yeah, no, everyone's fine. Yeah, I thought they might be. But then mm -hmm. Thanos is waiting outside, and he wants the stones, because he has a new plan in mind. Oh, he does? Yeah, he's like, well, now I see that my 50% decimation thing didn't work, so I'm just going to kill everyone and start fresh. Oh, wow. so you took the well-developed villain from Infinity War and turned him into Apocalypse from the last X-Men movie? Pretty much, yeah. Everything they've built will fall and all that. Interesting move. Yeah, so then it's time for a big final fight. Things are going to get real. Oh, boy. But first, Thor uses lightning to braid his beard real quick. What? And then the fight <laughs> begins. Oh, boy. So it's going to be this awesome showdown, like Cap is going to use Mjolnir. Wow, 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 wow. And then there's just Cap barely standing up, but he's facing down Thanos' army. Oh, there's going to be a big disposable CGI army? Of course, this is an Avengers movie. I love it. Of and course. just when it seems like all hope is lost, Doctor Strange opens up a portal and Black Panther walks through. Oh, Black Panther, huh? What does he do? He goes, he Bombay. Oh, he loves saying that. <laughs> yeah, and then all the heroes are going to have these slow, dramatic entrances through all the portals. Wow, nice of Thanos to not attack as everyone enters. Yeah, he definitely mm. lets them have a moment. Very considerate. Yes. So then it's going to be a massive fight. It's going to be like boom, 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 pow, pow, pow. That sounds great. I like the sound of that. And while all the fighting is happening, they need to get the gauntlet into this time travel van to put all the stones back in their proper places. Okay. And at a certain point, all the female heroes are going to land in the same spot to protect the gauntlet. Wow, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be badass. I bet it will. Why did they do that, though? To protect the gauntlet. Right, okay, but why did all the female heroes land in the same spot at the same time? Did they plan that, like, through their communicators? No, no, of course not. That's silly. <laughs> so it's a coincidence, then? It just so happens that all the female characters and only the female characters all did that simultaneously? What's wrong I mean, with that? I wouldn't call it a coincidence, either. Don't get me wrong. It sounds awesome. I'm just trying to understand how and why something like that would happen on a massive battlefield. Well, here's the thing. It's going to be a very <laughs> cool scene, so I need you to get all the way off my all back the way off. logistics. Oh, all okay. the way off. That. Great. So anyway, then Captain Marvel and the gang have to get this gauntlet to the van. Captain Marvel has the gauntlet. Why doesn't she put it on and turn all the bad guys to dust? Because. Fair enough. And then Thanos is going to end up getting his hands on the gauntlet. Uh-oh. Yeah, and then Doctor Strange looks at Tony and does this. So he's telling him that it's time for that uh, Ant-Man and Thanos' butt theory. Oh my god, no, he's telling Tony this is the one in 14 million chance. Oh, okay, gotcha. So Tony manages to grab all the stones without Thanos noticing. So the stones give you a huge surge of power when you put them on, but when you take them off, there's no noticeable difference? That's what we're going with. Huh. So then Tony snaps his fingers and turns all the bad guys to dust. And how does that work exactly? Like, how does Tony know what to do? Like, what does he do? He just thinks really hard that he wants all the bad guys dead and then snaps his fingers. So it has the same kind of mental logistics as as like a birthday wish? No, no, it's not at all like a birthday wish. <laughs> well, he just has to hope for it really hard and Doctor Strange couldn't tell him or it wouldn't come true. That sounds like a birthday wish. It's not a birthday <laughs> a wish. Bit, yeah. Anyway, so then Tony dies. Oh, very sad. And then Captain America has to travel back and put all the stones in the exact times and places they were taken from. Oh, so he has to go to Asgard and stab Natalie Portman with a thing? Yeah, I guess Ooh, so. Ah. And he has to go to Vormir and have a weird conversation with Red Skull and ask for directions to the kiddie pool where you get the soul stone? I, I mean, yeah, I guess he has to do that too. <laughs> very uncomfortable situation. Situations. Anyways, so instead yes. of coming back through the time machine, Cap decides to live a full life with Peggy Carter, so he ends up super old. So he just lived a full life while Bucky was out there somewhere getting tortured? I guess he did. <laughs> and when he wow. kisses Sharon Carter, that's like his niece or something? Uh, and what about when he goes... Maybe we can not think about this too much and just enjoy it for what it is. Oh, okay, that sounds good. Great, and so that's it. You know, Cap is old, <laughs> Iron Man is dead. Yeah. But, I mean, we could go visit him whenever with the time machine, right? I mean, yes, but... You know, let's not do that. Uh, I don't know. It could be a big moneymaker. Please don't. I'm just saying it's possible. I just think, you know, it'd be nice if character deaths were permanent, you know? It kind of takes away from their sacrifices if they pop up in other stuff. Okay, True. okay. Do you agree? Yep. Uh-huh. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you didn't agree. Of course well, they explained that one. Okay, you know, that's fair. <laughs> All right, let's just address it right now. Okay. <laughs> Why didn't Ant-Man actually do that? <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Becky, I'm, how quick that fight would have been over. I'm here for the Ant-Man up the butt. <laughs> just get up in there, all the way up into the anatomy, <laughs> and then just expand into giant Ant-Man there. Right. And then are. Thanos is done. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you never would have seen it coming. Oh, my. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> well, that kind of goes to a bigger point, too. How e Look how easily they killed Thanos at the start of this film. Yeah. How is it y'all weren't able to beat him before he got rid of half the universe? All of these heroes, why was it so hard to kill him up to this point? Yeah, you could have had Ant-Man do it a long time ago. <laughs> the fact that they killed him so easily right at the start of the film shows that he wasn't that big a villain. No. Granted, yes, he didn't have the stones with him at the time. He didn't have the stones, and he was a little... Uh... 
beat up from having uh, used the stones to destroy themselves. True, but but still, you know, just throw, just laying out all the facts. That's all. I, Iron Man and Spider Man and, and the group with them, you know, they almost took him down by themselves. Realistically, he's not that unbeatable. He, he's still vulnerable to being hit from behind. He's still vulnerable to, you know, something small or just a giant blast. You had a thousand different ways you probably could have taken him out up to this point without him, you know, having destroying half the universe. That's a good point. But these fights needed to be this way because that's what everybody was here for. Oh, sure. They were here for the big battle. And if you just destroyed Thanos like that, no battle. Yeah. I really do see the plot hole in that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, man, would you have been here for it if they had filled in the holes in this case? No. Yeah, so... In this case, I get it because Endgame was a really good movie, so... I gotta say, the, the final battle was, was really important, you know, Stone, Tony Stark's death was no big emotional moment for a lot of people. Yeah. So, it's like, I can forgive some things. Mm -hmm. One thing I will not forgive is another point I just heard here, though. Mm -hmm. Cap went and took all the stones back, and then he goes back to have a life with that girl, knowing full well that Bucky's actually <laughs> being tortured <laughs> in that same timeline. <laughs> what the f <laughs> yeah that's a very good question like, like they had like a whole movie where he was trying to hunt down bucky and find him and, and, and you know get his friend back and now he just doesn't care because he's got a woman that's what it is <laughs> yeah that's a major plot hole there <laughs> i guess he wasn't your friend after all bucky i'm just saying uh, oh poor sebastian stan right poor bucky well you know he, he mentioned it too i hadn't thought about this before but he actually did have to go back in time and meet with Red Skull, who was his arch nemesis in the first film. <laughs> oh my God! Because he's a because he's a in charge of the Soul Stone there. Yeah. Like, what was that conversation like? Man, we got screwed out of that one, didn't we? Right. That should have been like a uh, Easter egg at the end or something. Mm-hmm. Like a I forgive you kind of thing or something. I don't know. I don't know. You're stuck here forever. I forgive you. <laughs> like you're suffering enough just being stuck on this planet the rest of your life. Well, really, just for all eternity, because he can't get off of it. He can't die. You know. Yeah. But and he's doomed to know anybody that ever shows up. Mm -hmm. Crazy. That was that was one of the better pitch meetings, I think. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. The way they put it out there, that was really good. And of course, they mentioned the whole um, controversy about all of the women getting together around the gauntlet. Yeah, because it's like he's like sitting there trying to get him to answer. It's like, so is this a coincidence or did you plan this? It's like, no, they're just all there. You mean to tell me that they'll just kind of shut up like that? So you have a giant three mile wide battlefield with hundreds of characters out there, but. For some reason, all the women are right there together. Yeah. Look, I think in cases like this, you'd want more than just the girls protecting you here. They're all powerful, but you kind of need all the Avengers to build that gauntlet get where it's going. I say it's supposed to be a group effort here. Okay, I found another plot hole. Mm. If you gave that gauntlet to Ant-Man or Wasp while they were still like this, they could have held it and then <laughs> disappeared into in smallness with the gauntlet. And he would have never found it. Yeah, that's true. And then you could have gone up his <laughs> <laughs> yes Joe that is an option no then you could have taken it to the El Camino or the, the van there and he'd have never known what you were doing yeah you should have taken it to Hulk and let him do his thing or taking it to Captain Marvel and let her use her powers to activate it yeah you know Tony Stark didn't have to die but... he would have never found you in time to do anything about it yeah but no the drama of him actually getting his hands on the gauntlet needed to happen so it's like so yeah they made stupid errors that almost cost him everything yeah so. I do like, though, that Thanos acknowledges that his plan for erasing half the universe wasn't going to work. He acknowledged that in the past, too. So it's like, oh, okay, so I already I already did this. Mm -hmm. It shows that he is a humble person and willing to learn from his mistakes. Yeah. But he's like the last person you want learning from your mistakes. Yeah, he kind of went the wrong direction. They're like, oh, that doesn't work. Well, I guess I'll kill everybody. Well, what the heck does that prove? Okay, so you're just evil. <laughs> yeah. All right, kill him. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you made a point before. And it was worth an argument, mm -hmm. but no, now just kill him. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no two ways about it. He's a terrible person. You're just a sadist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Straight up. Uh, Genocidal lunatic. Wonderfully done pitch meeting. Yes. Loved it. But on that note, I think that's where we're going to end things, guys. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bells, take a look at us on those things up there, and like and subscribe again. Also, consider joining up and becoming a member, guys. Help support the channel. We'd greatly appreciate that. Uh, it's not required, and I certainly wouldn't recommend it. But definitely do it anyway. So, <laughs> But until next time, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Bye.